A320 Mentor Channel Thrust reverser selection is a decision to stop. The standard operations procedures for landing requests that the flight crew perform a full stop landing after thrust reverser selection. However, in-service flight data analysis revealed that the equivalent of one go-around per month is performed after selection of thrust reversers. This briefing describes an event where the flight crew performed a go-around after they had selected thrust reversers on an A320 aircraft. The reverser on one engine remained deployed until the end of the flight. The article explains how adherence to standard operations procedures will prevent recurrence of this kind of event and describes the product enhancements that Airbus developed as additional safety barriers. Case Study Event Description An A320 aircraft fitted with CFM56 engines was on an ILS approach in Flap 3 configuration with good visibility conditions. There was a 25 knots crosswind and wind gusts from the left side. When the pilot flying initiated the flare slightly above 30 feet radio altimeter, started the decrab maneuver at 24 feet radio altimeter. 2. Set the thrust levers to idle at 11 feet radio altimeter. 3. The left main landing gear briefly touched the runway, but was not fully compressed when the flight crew set the thrust lever to maximum reverse. 4. When both the left and right main landing gear touched the runway and were compressed, the thrust reversers began to deploy. 5. The flight crew then decided to perform a go-around. The left main landing gear was briefly uncompressed when the pilot flying applied toga thrust. They selected configuration 2 and applied nose-up inputs. 6. Engine 2 spooled up to reach toga thrust, but engine 1 remained at idle with the reverse indication still displayed on the engine warning display. The aircraft began to veer to the left. The pilot flying reacted and applied half of maximum right rudder input. Both the left and right main landing gear were briefly compressed again. 7. The aircraft continued to veer to the left, and the Eng-1 reverse unlocked ECOM alert triggered when the left and right main landing gear were uncompressed. The beta target symbol on the PFD was flagged. 8. The aircraft overflew the left runway edge by 1 feet. 9. The flight crew commanded the landing gear up, and the aircraft started to climb on a trajectory that was shifted by approximately 20 degrees to the left of the runway axis. When the landing gear was retracted and the pitch was set close to 12.5 degrees corresponding to the target for go-around, with one engine inoperative. 10. The vertical speed reached 1,000 feet per minute. The flight crew then set the engine one thrust lever to idle at 360 feet and shut down engine one, as per the ECOM procedure at 1,260 feet QNH. The beta target symbol appeared again on the PFD, which enabled the pilot flying to correctly trim the rudder, and the autopilot was engaged. The flight crew performed a second ILS approach and manually landed the aircraft with engine one inoperative. The aircraft arrived at the gate with three of the four NG-1 thrust reverser blocker doors deployed and not locked. The fourth door was not deployed but was unlocked. Event Analysis Thrust Reverser Deployment Sequence The thrust reversers unlocked when both the left and right main landing gear were compressed. When the pilot flying applied toga thrust, the thrust reversers of the left and right engines were not fully deployed. The amber rev indication was still displayed on the engine warning display. Thrust Reverser Stowage Logic on CFM56 engines When the thrust levers are moved from the reverse sector to idle or forward thrust sector, the electronic control unit, ECU of each engine, computes a ground or flight status using the compressed or uncompressed status for the left and right main landing gear. This is provided by the Landing Gear Control and Interface Unit, LGCIU. If the computed status is ground when the thrust levers are moved out of the reverser sector, then the ECU will send a stow command until the thrust reversers are stowed. If the computed status is flight, then the ECU does not send a signal to initiate the stow sequence. Why engine two thrust reverser stowed and locked? When the pilot flying set toga thrust, ECU two computed the ground status using information from LGCIU two. This sent the stow command to the engine two thrust reverser. The engine two thrust reverser stowed and locked correctly, and engine two spooled up to reach toga thrust. Why engine one thrust reverser did not stow and lock? 
When the pilot flying set toga thrust, ECU-1 computed the flight status using information from LGCIU-1. The ECU-1 did not send a stow command to the engine one reverser, and its blocker doors remained deployed. The automatic idle protection activated and sent a signal to prevent engine one from increasing thrust. What caused the difference between engine one and engine two? A short asynchronism between the computation of the ground flight status by both ECUs combined with a bounce of the left landing gear explains the different behaviors of the ECUs. This timing difference can be explained by the fact that thrust levers may not be closely aligned when the flight crew moves them from the reverser sector to idle or forward thrust sector. In addition, a very slight delay may appear between the signals and computation chain of LGCIUE IUECU, which are independent for the left and right sides. Limited two aircraft with CM56 engines. A study of the reverser stowing logic was performed on A320 aircraft, equipped with all other types of engine. It confirmed that only A320 aircraft equipped with CFM56 engines can be affected by this potential for the thrust reversers to not retract if the crew decides to perform a go-around after the thrust reversers are selected. Beta target not displayed due to EIS logic. The current EIS logic flags the beta target symbol on the PFD if the reversers are not stowed and the auto idle protection is active. This is explains why the beta target symbol was flagged in the early stage of the go-around and before engine one was shut down. As soon as engine one was shut down, the beta target reappeared on the PFD. Impact on aircraft control and performance. The flight crew had to cope with a fast lateral trajectory deviation, together with a significant degradation of climb performance during an already demanding maneuver. Significant pitch and roll values reached close to the ground. In the initial phase of the go-around, the aircraft attitude went close to wing tip and tail strike conditions, but remained within the ground clearance limits. Operational Considerations Adherence to the standard operations procedures for landing will prevent the recurrence of a similar event and ensure optimum and safe use of the thrust reversers, regardless of the engine type and on any aircraft. Select reversers immediately after the touchdown. The standard operations procedures for landing requests that the flight crew select thrust reversers immediately after landing gear touchdown, but not before to ensure timely deployment of the thrust reversers for optimum aircraft deceleration on landing. Thrust reversers selection means full stop. The standard operation procedures for landing also states that as soon as the flight crew selects reverse thrust, they must perform a full stop landing. This is also highlighted for a go around near the ground in the FCTM, which states, the pilot flying must not initiate a go around after the selection of the thrust reversers. Adherence to this standard operations procedures will avoid any repeat of the event described in this article. Product Enhancements Airbus performed flight data analysis with inputs from 31 operators for 3.4 million flights of A320 family aircraft. The results showed that the equivalent of one go-around per month is performed with the thrust reversers already selected, which represents significant exposure. Consequently, Airbus decided to address this issue with updates to the ECU software, the EIS software, and the relevant documentation. ECU software update for CFM56 engines. An update of the ECU software for CFM56 engines is under development. It includes an enhanced stow logic in the case of a rejected landing with reversers already selected, which will prevent recurrence of the event described in this article. The ECU software update is planned to be available in 2025 for CFM 56 5B engines and is under review for CFM 56 5A and 5C. EIS Update A320 family EIS 2 software will be modified to enable the display of the beta target on the PFD when rev doors are unlocked. This enhancement will be implemented in the next EIS 2 standard. Enhancement of the SOPs for landing the SOPs for landing will be updated to move the following text from the FCOM Layer 2 to a note in the FCOM Layer 1, making it more visible to the flight crew. The flight crew must select reverse thrust immediately after landing gear touchdown. And, as soon as the flight crew selects reverse thrust, they must perform a full stop landing. The SOPs for landing states that as soon as the flight crew selects reverse thrust, they must perform a full stop landing. Analysis of in-service data 
shows that there is still a risk exposure with flight crews deciding to perform a go-around after the thrust reversers were selected. An incident that happened on an A320 aircraft highlighted a risk of having one of the engines with the reversers still deployed in the case of a go-around initiated after reverser deployment on aircraft equipped with CFM-56 engines. Application of the SOPs should prevent this kind of event from happening. However, Airbus decided to introduce aircraft modifications to further prevent this scenario from happening and enhance the documentation by making the recommendation to perform a full stop landing after selection of thrust reversers more visible to the flight crew. A320, Mentor Channel.